I'm going to talk about the miniaturization of an aerosol impactor with integrated piezoelectric thin film resonance mass balance. But uh, first of all, I would like to define what is an atmospheric aerosol, because that's what is uh, uh, sensed on this uh, resonator. So atmospheric aerosol, also known as particular matter, uh, PM, are a small and tiny uh, pieces of matter made of solid or liquid suspended in the air. The Environmental Protection Agency has classified them as a PM 2.5 and PM 10, which corresponds to particles smaller than 2.5 micrometers and 10 micrometers, respectively. There is a uh, recent classification of even smaller particles, such as ultra-fine and fine, pa fine particles, which corresponds to particles smaller than 0.1 micron and 1 micron, respectively. Atmospheric aerosol has uh, shown in recent studies to have negative effects on the human health. Um, this can cause uh, cardiovascular issues, respiratory diseases, asthma, uh, even the skin and eyes irritation, beard defects, and in uh, some recent studies, uh, cancer. According to Lefov, the PM size uh, can determine the respiratory tract that the, tra the particle can travel inside the body. For instance, um, he observed that uh, PM of 10 can reach the superior parts of, the of organs in the body, while uh, PM 2.5 and uh, ultrafine and fine particles can travel deeper and reach uh, different organs. Uh, Bruning, in its uh, study in 2006, relates the size of the particle with different effects on human health, as you can see here from the summary on his uh, work. So this is the reason why the uh, atmospheric aerosol it requires to be monitored in the air. The most common technique to monitor aerosol particles is uh, impactor collectors. These are kind of simple. They only require a nozzle and a collector substrate and uh, a difference in pressure on one side of the nozzle is going to uh, provide air coming through outside and traveling through the, the nozzle. And then particles with uh, big mass and high velocity won't be able to continue the airflow and they will be impacted on the collector, while smaller particles with a small mass and less velocity will continue the airflow. These uh, equipments required to weigh uh, enough mass to be able to obtain the mass concentration and also for require really high vacuum uh, pumps, which is translated uh, with high power systems. And uh, they are still uh, costly and bulky. Uh, on the other hand, MEMS has been already implemented as particle collectors, and this can provide real-time monitoring. Uh, these are uh, three different works. Papronti and Guasisto have been implemented a, a cantilever uh, made of a piezoelectric material, and they uh, to collect the particles. Uh, while Mehdisade has been implemented the thermal piezoresistive resonator to do the same. As you can see from these three different works, they had to fabricate the microfluidic system or the nozzle or orifice in a different batch. And at the end, they have to bring them together, align it, and do the assembly, which is making the system still big. So the, what we are uh, showing in this work is to eliminate this part of the alignment. And, uh, Doing this, we are also showing a smaller uh, system which will give us a, a low cost and uh, it will have less weight. And uh, we'll ha also show a lower power consumption in comparison with the thermal piezoresistive resonators already implemented as particle collectors. The impactor design that we are uh, showing here is to um, substitute the substrate collector for a MEM resonator and uh, using the theoretical and experimental work from uh, Marpo, where he attributes the Stokes number with the probability of a particle to be collected with a 50% of efficiency, as well as uh, Reynolds, a dimensionless, num dimensionless number, 
related with the efficiency in the range between 500 and 3,000 of a particle to be collected. And between these uh, two um, dimensionless number, we can, it can be predicted the, the cutoff that can be collected on the device. Uh, our work was targeting the range of nanometer size, and uh, for that we choose three nozzles uh, with a diameter of 80 micrometers in size, and also an airflow of 250 milliliters per minute. This gave us a cutoff point of 80 nanometers. The device is a resonance mass sensor based on mass loading. So we monitor the initial frequency of the resonator, and as soon as a particle is deposited on its surface, its effective mass is going to change, giving, uh, as a result, a shift on its initial resonance frequency. The device is going to be working in its first length extensional mode, and it, we are going to have a piezoelectric readout. From COMSOL simulation, we can see the red and blue colors can show the location with the largest uh, and the smallest amplitudes uh, with red and blue color, respectively. The device was also designed to have a width of 150 micrometers in, uh, um, in dimension and the length to 450. These are going to provide us uh, provide a really enough area to collect particles and, uh, and it will also provide us a good uh, resonance frequency as well. Uh, the device was fabricated implementing only a double side polished wafer and uh, it only requires the six lithography steps and we can see here this is the cross section so the three masks are going to be implemented just uh, the three masks will be implemented just to make the, the mass balance, which corresponds to, to the, the top part on this cross-section view. The impactor nozzles are going to be made on the substrate, and the impaction micro, microchamber, as we call it, is the empty space uh, at the output of the nozzle and the surface of the resonator. It will require the, the other uh, mask. We are going to start with the patterning and lifting off of the ground layer, then we deposit the aluminum nitride by sputtering, and we dry etch half of its thickness, and the rest of it is done uh, etched by wet uh, techniques. Then we pattern and lift off the top contact, and to protect the device for further etchings, we deposit two microns uh, of oxide by LPCVD, and we pattern an uh, openings to the creation for the microimpaction chamber. Then we pattern the back side uh, by dry uh, etching the oxide and then removing the silicon by reactive ion etching all the way up until reach the ground layer. And then we come back to the top side and we remove the silicon uh, using a recipe by dry isotropic silicon etching. And um, to remove the remains of the oxide, we only expose the device to HF vapor. The device, uh, is gonna, instead of the, the, the particles be deposited on the top, they are going to be deposited at the back side. Uh, and I'm gonna show in the next slide how. So these are gonna be the nozzle, particles are gonna come from outside and will be deposited on the back side. This is the CM image of the device fabricated. We can see the piezoelectric resonator suspended on top of three nozzles of 80 nanometers in diameter, and the empty space that is underneath correspond to the micro impaction chamber. In this uh, SEM figure that is uh, very small, we can see two uh, piezoelectric resonators in one single chip. For the electrical connections that are gonna be uh, connected in this way, according to this, this SEM image, we are gonna wire bond it, the device uh, on a PCB. To create the drop in the pressure, we are gonna implement a micro machine cap which has some glands for O-rings to seal into the PCB and also a, a connection towards the pump. The air is gonna come from outside, as uh, these uh, red lines are showing, and particles are gonna, going to pass through the nozzle and be deposited at the back, as I mentioned previously. These are the images of the experimental setup. So this is the device. We wire bond it and we, um, place the micro machine cap on the top and we fix it with bolts. 
Then we connected, we connected the pump at the bottom side and the air is gonna come uh, from uh, outside as I am showing here with this arrow. And the device was placed in the laboratory and after 60 minutes of monitoring its shift in frequency, we uh, were able to obtain um, is a slope of, of frequency versus time, which can provide us the real-time mass concentration. To inspect the device and, uh, and see if we have uh, particles collected at the, at the back side, we take the chip, we use a copper tape, uh, copper tape uh, to place it, and we place it on the surface of the chip, and we just break the device to have access to, to these particles. And on these SEM images, uh, we, we can see mainly from the SEM in the middle that particles are all spread in the resonator plate. For the close-up views that are uh, showing the, some uh, areas, we found particles uh, as small as the size of our cut-off, as it was designed, to a few micrometers between two, one and two. Now that we have access to the particles, we take the advantage to make the elemental composition analysis, and most of them show to have oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon. And uh, the rest of them, as, such as the platinum aluminum and the background of the nitrogen, correspond to the um, resonator um, elements. In this case, we can suggest that we have a standard environment. So as a conclusion, um, we design, fabricate, assemble, and tested a miniature aerosol impactor with a thin film uh, resonator. We also eliminate the problem of the misalignment, and we were able to collect a real-time mass concentration measurements for particles ranging from our targeted cut point and few micrometers. And, uh, okay, I want to, to thank to the NSF for the award that was uh, paying for all these uh, experiment, and I also would like to thank CONACYT for the scholarship that they gave me for my PhD studies. Mm -hmm. Thank you.